appeal to his baser instincts, of which he has plenty. Here he comes now. Everybody keep quiet while I put the matter up to him. The rat entered the barn the way he always did, creeping along close to the wall. What's up, he asked, seeing the animals assembled. We're holding a director's meeting, replied the old sheep. Well, break it up, said Templeton. Meetings bore me. And the rat ran to climb a rope that hung against the wall. Look, said the old sheep. Next time you go to the dump, Templeton, bring back a clipping from a magazine. Charlotte needs new ideas so she can write messages in her web and save Wilbur's life. Let him die, said the rat. I should worry. Oh, no, you don't. You'll worry all night when next winter comes, said the sheep. You'll worry all night on a zero morning in next January when Wilbur is dead and nobody comes down here with a nice pail of warm slops to pour into the trough. Wilbur's leftover food is your chief source of supply, Templeton. You know that. Wilbur's food is your food. Therefore, Wilbur's destiny and your destiny are closely linked. If Wilbur is killed and his trial stands empty day after day, you'll grow so thin we can look right through your stomach and see objects on the other side. Templeton's whiskers quivered. Maybe you're right, he said gruffly. Of course she is, for once. I'm making a trip to the dump tomorrow afternoon. I'll bring back a magazine clipping if I can find one. Thanks, said Charlotte. The meeting is now adjourned. I have a busy evening ahead of me. I've got to tear my web apart and write terrific. Wilbur blushed. But I'm not terrific, Charlotte. I'm just about an average for a pig. You're terrific as far as I'm concerned, replied Charlotte sweetly. And that's what counts. You're my best friend, and I think you're sensational. Now stop arguing and go get some sleep. To be continued.